We'll force Pastor James to lick it off of his back. I can't imagine a universe where that happens. Uh, are you kidding? We could easily strong arm him and make him do what we want. You're not gonna look sour cream and sprinkles off Josh's back. Listen, you don't know what kind of dark side Uncle James has. He's good. Indeed. Not to, not to mention, if I'm already threatening him with bodily harm, I'll I'll figure it out. Welcome to My Mom Has Tourette's Podcast. This week, one of our mothers uses a bidet daily, maybe multiple times a day. Maybe never, because one of our mothers may not even poop. But I'm your host. My name is Andrew. I'm Nathan. I'm Josh. And I'm Andrew. And we are super excited this week, boys. Yeah, I can feel the energy. You know, so I just exciting. want to make a quick comment. I don't want to use a bidet because I like to gamble that maybe by accident my finger will rip through the toilet paper. Why is that a gamble you're willing to take? What is the upside There's none. of that gamble? Well, I mean, it depends on the location you're at when it happens because you could just start finger painting. I literally just Josh, got a you're message just like the outing moment yourself you said right that now. that says that's stupid, and I agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was nothing pertaining to this podcast. Uh, well, gentlemen, why don't we, since we're on the interesting subject, Josh, why don't you tell us how your week was first? All right. So month? first thing first, <laughs> I was sick Monday night on the way home from work. Nice. I caught off Tuesday. Uh, the wife and I are starting a new health journey and it began this weekend. So we're excited for that. Uh, I got to work Saturday with my dad for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Yes. I tortured him. Uh, I bought my wife a Valentine's day present of Turkish delight off of Etsy from Turkey. Nice. Can she hear you? No, she's not upstairs. Good. Let's go. I already gave it to her. You bum. Uh, And I just want to give a little funny movement from uh, Star Citizen last week. There was a bunch of us uh, dog fighting above this planet. And there's this uh, area below. No, 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 no. He was still in prison at this time. That's good. And uh, there's this location below us where you can sell and buy commodities. So we were like trying to, we think that they were trying to sell something because they were there when we got there, <laughs> we were trying to take it from them. And it turned into this like two hour long battle with them where if someone died, you could just respawn and get back to the battle. And it just kept going and going. Hmm. Well, one of the guys I was playing with had a, um, it's not a missile launcher, but it's like a, a, a ray gun, but like a, a giant one. I, f- I forget what they're called. Like a rail gun? Yes, exactly. Rail gun. And nice. he was standing oh, on the ground shooting people out of the air with it. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And I got shot out of the air, but my ship didn't explode. So it hit the ground and I was able to get out. And I ran up to him. And he's like, hey, someone's on the ground here with me, but I don't know where they are. So we're on top of a mountain. I'm like looking down. And I don't see anybody. So I see two ships off in the distance. One of them is his. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go see if any of the ships work because I'm going to get in and get back in the fight. Mm-hmm. So I run down, you know, just my own my business. All the gunshots and the lasers are exploding in the air above me. Ships are crashing around me, you know, everything. And I get next to the ship and all of a sudden I start getting shot and then the ship explodes and I have eight health mm-hmm. left. So I hurried up and healed myself and I look over and underneath the ship is an enemy. And what he was doing is he was trying to shoot me under a ship, but his shields were on. And so he was shooting me and the ship at the same time. And ballistic weapons go through shields and hit the ship. <clears throat> just, just how it works in the game. Nice. So he ended up blowing his ship up and killing himself. But in the game, there's different levels of like killing yourself. You have one where you're, it's incapacitated So you're dead for like an hour and a half, but it gives somebody the ability to come heal you. Mm -hmm. Or the second Mm -hmm. one is you just, you die. Well, he was, he was incapacitated. So he had the ability to someone come heal him. So I had a tractor beam picked up his body, 
pulled it out from underneath the ship and put it right at my feet. Now, keep in mind, when he's incapacitated, he can still see, like, whatever his position is. So if Mm -hmm. his body's like this, he's just, like, looking forward. So I climbed on top of him, looking down at him like this, went into his personal inventory, and took his helmet off. (laughs) And there's no atmosphere on this planet, so he suffocated in eight seconds. And I just stood above him him. as he did him. That was some psychopath crap. That is, yeah. That is what happens if I close the garage door and the cat's still there kind of stuff. Things had to happen. You know, mess with me and hide underneath your ship. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Immediately after that, I got nuked. So it was a good time. Andrew, deserved. tell the world about that tissue on your neck. Josh has an interesting uh, life. I believe, it's, I believe it's created from Medline is the company that produces these. Uh, they come in packs of two. The tape was sold separately. Uh, adhesive by 3M. They're th- pretty solid. But, Didn't uh, they get sell, uh, sued for their earplugs? I'm not wearing the earplugs. I couldn't care less. Okay. But yeah, that's that's that. Why are you no, wearing uh, it? Haven't you ever seen Nelly in the early 2000s with his band-aids for no reason? No. That wasn't my time period. You weren't in the 2000s, you lying no. sack of potatoes. I was a baby. <laughs> Is potatoes a bad word for you now because you can't eat them? First of all, <laughs> you can. I'm going to tell you things that I shouldn't <laughs> tell you off air. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I was hospitalized. I found out I was diabetic by passing out in the shower. And I hit my tooth that got jammed into my gums pretty bad and caused an infection. And so I went to the hospital again. And then I went to the dentist and they were like, whoever told you they couldn't help you is absolutely stupid and deserves their license to be revoked because you need to go to the hospital and get surgery. And so he just like told me everything I needed to say to go to the hospital and get surgery. And they put me on painkillers for the first time. So I was high for the first time and that was a trip. Um, but, uh, I went there, they put an incision in my neck, uh, to get out this infection. Cause like, as I'm sure those of you who might've seen a couple previous episodes recently, my jaw was like really, really swollen and it still is a little bit, but it's not as bad. Um, but they had to va- basically scrape out and vacuum out all this nastiness. And uh, they had to get rid of the tooth. And they were like, hey, we're going to probably take out your wisdom tooth because everyone needs them really taken out, usually at some point. And they were like, oh, whenever I came to, they were like, oh, my B. We had to take out three teeth because it was the infection was potentially split, spreading through your blood. So we're going to keep you here a couple days and make sure you don't die. And I was like, well, that's nice that you're making sure I'm not dying, so I will comply. And yeah, then I came home. Uh, I think the day after surgery, I got to have real food for the first time in a month. I didn't have solid food all of January. So I, Nathan, I, uh, Andrew and I were texting the day he got surgery and he was out of reco- in recovery. And I use Siri to uh talk and so i was like you know hey insert her name because she's listening right now and she's a little sensitive uh read message and she start reading it and then immediately goes calling andrew miller and it was like 11 o'clock and i'm like no no hang up no and he goes hello i'm like i'm so sorry i didn't mean to call you my phone did and he's like we start talking he's like I had a hamburger and I don't think it was real, but it tasted so good. <laughs> Dude, it was, it had to be one of those like great value. They come in like the eight pack bag <laughs> that was just frozen. It had to be terrible, but man, I could like taste the salt and the pepper. Yeah. Cause for meat. everyone listening for the last like month or two, he's been drinking nothing but like broth and stuff. Yeah. It was, it was probably like a solid five weeks and I was just drinking smooth soups and a bunch of protein shakes. You still can't eat potatoes? 
Well, because I'm diabetic, I have to watch my carb right, intake. So right, I guess you wanted potatoes, to. Share, I don't know if you wanted to share that potato, or not. But yeah, my uh, brother kind of just cut off him. Uh, yeah. I kind of just looked at the doctor and was like, "I'm gonna tell you two things. Probably still gonna eat potatoes. Um, just not as much. <laughs> I, I will taper back, but I can guarantee you." <laughs> The amount of vegetables you're telling me to eat is not going to happen. I have pills and powders for that, and that's what I'm going to do because vegetables are disgusting. They're healthy, and they're not good. They are good for the body, but not the soul, and I'm more worried about my soul and where it's going after everything's said and done. Like I played the song for my mom. I'm here for a good time. For a good time, time. not a long time. (laughs) That's right. I told Andrew, um, I said the saying is 100% true now that bread makes you fat. Indeed. Bread makes you fat? Yeah, I couldn't scream it because the guy who was sitting next to me... Oh my gosh. uh, He had three fractured uh, pieces of his spine. And yeah, he was... uh, When he went to sleep, I was like, dude, you you do it because I wouldn't want to be conscious for that either. He was sleeping a lot, and when he was awake, he was in a lot of pain. I felt bad for him. I was praying for him a lot because he was was struggling. But uh, that's how my... Yeah, January was the longest year of my life for this month. It was <laughs> it was rough. Yeah, it was it? But uh, made it through. How January about yourself, my least Nathan? Favorite year. Uh, Did you hopefully not die I over the month? I, I haven't died. No, um, I'm still around here, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so basically, I was uh, mostly. I mean, I've been laid off for wait, what? I, I've been laid off for a while, and I've just been trying to find work. So that's been a good time, and I've. Uh, I got a new job and I'm not going to have any time anymore. So that's going to be fun. Well, one problem solved down the drain. You got the job. So, mm-hmm. you know, we can iron out the rest of it in time. Mm-hmm. I bought an ironing board just then, for that. Yes. I have a steamer actually, if you'd prefer. Stanley you don't steamer? Need an ironing board. Stanley steamer. I don't know okay, if that's just have, a local we're thing. Not, we're not, we're not, okay, he's, they're say. not paying. They're not paying us. I take back my my. Listen, just jingle. because they're not paying, y'all mean it's not consensual. <laughs> they would. I don't know how to say fast, steamer backwards, or I would. Steamer warm yeast. Warm yeast yeast is the yell at. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're good to go. Stanley, Stanley would be yell Stanley Gilman. No, but no, but no. It, it, it's pronu- It's no, the way no, it's no, pronounced, no, no, no. not the way it's spelled. Stan Nance. Nance. I'm sorry. I'm looking around my room to find who's making the rules to this because this is my house, and I'm going to say it how I want. Steamer. Two thousand years later. Yeah, this is decent. This is good content. This is wonderful content. This is much better than our Let's Play. Nathan, is that all you have for this week? Just you don't want to leave us in anything else exciting? Uh, nothing exciting happened. I had a smoothie happened. today. I've been watching lots of Doctor Who, so there's that. Oh, nice. tell us about it. How's it going? Oh, it's going well. We're about to finish season seven, so... About to find the new, not about to get a new doctor. I'm so excited. Jake Gyllenhaal's new movie comes Yeelan out next Hala. month. Oh, that's it right. Is exciting. I didn't realize it came oh. out soon. I don't know what you're talking about. What movie? And that Mark uh, Wahlberg movie that's Apple Plus only. I'm so mad. I want to watch it. Apple TV makes some good stuff these days. Yeah. Well, they've got that movie with Tom Hanks where he's like supposed to be the last guy on earth built a robot. That's Apple Plus only. And then Mark Wahlberg has a movie where he's like a a, a family man, but he's mm. actually a spy. And then like mm. the family ends up getting like involved and it looks so good. But that means I have to buy the subscription. And I don't want to buy the subscription just to watch one show. I uh I only knew about Jake Gyllenhaal's movie Roadhouse. Gyllenhaal. It does look good. It does look pretty good. And Conor McGregor's in it. I'm interested to see his terrible acting, but good fight. Nathan, would you like to let everybody know where they can find us at? Um, well, if you're watching this video, you can probably find us on YouTube. And if you're listening to us on one of your podcasting platforms, you can probably find us there. Okay, are we ready to get into... <laughs> 
I really enjoyed the pause and the just right immediate jump. Dog, I don't know. You can find us on just about every podcasting platform. You can find us on YouTube. My mom has Tourette's. It's youtube.com slash at my mom has Tourette's. And uh, we that's cool. Um, and if you're watching this, like if you want to listen to the podcast, you can. You don't have to watch it. But if you watch it, we appreciate it because you get to see our beautiful faces. Nathan, I'd like to say something. I would like to hear you it. too, Andrew. Oh, um, your hair and beard's coming back and I love it. And Andrew, when I asked you to take off your headset and you did, your hair is getting long and you almost look like Eminem with like that blonde hair when, uh, when he was playing that persona, I forget what he calls himself when he was like that young, weird, blonde headed. You're really uh, forgetting slim shady. My yeah, guy. There he is. Uh, it was a strange part. Well, so, the real Eminem, please stand up. Yeah. He had to sit down because the, the lions mm-hmm. and the tigers and the bears. Am I? No. Nah, hey, what's your shirt say? It says something in an alien language. <laughs> Andrew, would you like to segregate us into the next subject? First of all, how- it's not segregate because we're not racist. Put one in the jar. I don't know if that counts. You can say the word well, segregation. I'm not news. scared of the past. <laughs> gaming news. Okay, well, I guess we're going to be talking about news in the gaming sphere. You know, that sphere, the one found in the LA, the big old sphere. It's called the gaming sphere, and all this news comes from it. So this first one well, comes from... Well, since you brought LA up, you want to hear a conspiracy theory that my wife has heard on TikTok? After yeah, gaming no, news. let's continue. Yeah. Okay. Hold it, and we'll talk about it after. So... There's a rumor, and this comes from GameRant.com, that the next-gen Xbox console will not be developed by the same designers. Whoa. Uh So the team that designed the Xbox Series X. Guess what? Chicken There's box. a rumor they might not be the ones to design the next one. Whoa, crazy. Ooh. So they might have different design because they would be designed by someone different. That's well, about all I have for this one. Whoever designed that one just decided, hey, man, let's make a box. To be fair, it's Xbox. It's always just been a box and different kinds of box. Way. Did you hear about the founder of Xbox, though? Mm-mm. Bro, okay. So this kind of blew my mind. So the guy who originally created Xbox was actually a baker. Like he had his own bakery. I'm pretty sure he loved making bread. That's kind of thing. He always made homemade bread. You're starting a joke and I can't wait. This is not a joke. This is 100%. This sounds like a setup for a joke, but all right. It does sound like a setup, but I will (laughs) openly tell you this is not a joke. Okay. So picture, right? Picture the Xbox logo. You know, just uh, that like circle with the, the little cross in it. The sourdough like loaf for bread. Josh, shut up! <laughs> you said bread baker, and then the Xbox. But that's the whole thing. Is uh, the Xbox logo is just a picture of sourdough bread when it gets scored on the top and. And then you can't unsee it because, you know, there, there's a huge, like, like look it up, look up the guy who made Xbox, and you'll see that he was a baker. Yeah, that's sourdough. And huh? it's just sourdough. That's what it. about the other thing that you can't unhear? The Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Why don't you tell him about that instead of interrupting me? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Was it that? Um. <laughs> Do bakers contribute to deaths in America if bread makes you fat? Yes. There was sure. a guy who said spoons That's a way to look at fat, it. So I'm sure that works. That's yeah. a way to look at it. Anybody who All creates right. food in some way or another technically contributes. I'm a murderer. Bad, bad, uh, unhealthy food or food that can. Well, that's addictive. I am definitely a murderer. Because I wouldn't really call farmers that way unless they have peanut plants and then give it to peanut uh. riddled children. PETA calls farmers killers. Why not us? Uh, you not riddled children? Yes. <laughs> That's what I went with. You move <laughs> on. Just, is that what, <laughs> the peanuts. Is that <laughs> what they make peanut butter out of? 
Like the scrawny children. children. <laughs> no, I've children. made peanut butter. You don't need any children in it. <laughs> Rumor: Fortnite Painful could be crossing sugar. over with a popular anime. One Piece. Which one is it this time? One Piece. He said it already. Pay attention. Really? Am yeah. I right? He's good at that. No, it is. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. What? Um, They're gonna. <laughs> oh well, I won't. I won't interrupt Nathan. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, Fortnite, which has crossovers with everything, is going to cross over with a popular anime called One Piece. Pretty sure they've already cross like done crossovers with like Naruto and crap like that, so it's really not that surprising. Um yep. we're kind of scraping the bottle of the barrel with some of this some of this news, but hey, uh some people here are uh playing the Fortnites and uh Josh, I love you very much and we appreciate you. You play Fortnite, I don't. I haven't in a while, but uh, I mean it's a fun game. I just uh have only so much time in my life, and I don't always put that time Fortnite into Fortnite. and Epic Games and Disney actually just launched a video. I'm pretty sure, viral. like, Disney just purchased major power over not, I mean, they didn't, like, outright purchase Epic Games, but they spent, spent, spent like, two billion dollars into it or something like that, and so Disney is, like, gonna be creating a huge, like, I think they're gonna be putting all of their characters in it at, over time. It's kind of absurd. A while... While it's not gaming news, did you hear the theory about what Disney's going to be doing? Apparently, they're gearing up. Word on the street is they're gearing up to buy Apple. But you're allowed to like some your pretty theory, valid. But I have to wait till the end. Proof. Well, oh no! I just <laughs> threw it out. There. I just threw it out there, my guy. I didn't go on a 15 minute tangent about sa sauces last week or whatever you did. I don't know. See, I don't know enough about. I know if you said, okay, name the top 10 biggest companies, I could probably name seven. I have no clue, like, the realm of how much Disney is evaluated at compared to Apple, but I would have guessed Apple was more. I know Disney is absolutely enormous, but Apple is Apple, iPhone. Uh, everyone who doesn't want to think buys an iPhone. And then anybody else, who, the, the hey, 5% Siri, how much is Apple goes worth? and buys an Android because they like Android better because it's hey, superior. So I found worth everything $3 being... Trillion. Oh, we're going to find out the other one, right? Well, i got to wait. How much is Disney worth? Disney does own like Star Wars and stuff. $203 billion. That's it? How is Disney going to buy Apple? That's the word on the street, Chief. I'm not, they I'm might not sell some properties or... You know, just when their net Apple worth doesn't mean that's how much money they have either. Well, net worth is my like net with worth all is assets and like, everything. Yeah, so. my net worth is probably twelve bucks, but I have a lot more than twelve dollars to my name. <laughs> all right. Well, I I don't. I'm not going to pretend like I understand how any of that works. But if Disney buys Apple, I hope that they make some really delicious apples for Sleeping Beauty. That's all I say. That's real stupid. Oh wait, Let's we have on. a sound so, for that. I'm stupid. We do. No, no. You know, I like the way you did it. I actually really preferred that one. Um. <laughs> this is a really funny one. Starfield might not be coming to PS5 after all. In another twist in the ongoing Xbox multi-platform drama, a well-known leaker walks back the claim that Starfield is coming to PS5. So I guess Starfield was originally going to be coming out for PS5, like that was the plan or the, the thought. I don't even know if it was ever announced, but because I have not really followed that closely, but... Yeah, uh, Starfield is the next Bethesda game that came out like a few months ago or something like that, and it's had a lot of people uh it's it's been very controversial because a lot of people have just been very just didn't think it was that good. And there was people I know that have really enjoyed it, so there's that too. But um it's pretty much you know the the Bethesda, the makers of Skyrim, if you've ever heard of that game. If you've not, you would probably aren't listening to this podcast, or you're our moms. And um basically yeah, man, I don't know. Starfield was supposed to be coming to PS5, but I guess it's it's there's a leaker who is well known for leaking things that happen just is inside somehow and gets this information and knows and then lets the public know. So uh, somebody on PS5, someone who was a good old PlayStation player, was planning on uh, playing Starfield. Uh, guess what? Buy it buy an Xbox or a PC because you're not doing it otherwise. Yep. Yeah. You don't get Halo anyway, so like, why would you have a PS5? Guys, I love you. I love you. What's wrong? I love you too. Are you dying? Nothing. No, oh. just want you to know you're loved. Thank you. And we don't know the audience. Well, we probably do because I think only our friends listen to this, but um, 
that we love you. We still we love whoever you, it is anyway. But Indeed. Much love. Andrew, are you Big picking a temple on your arm? Negative, sir. Josh, what was your theory? I do have an itch, though. It's not my theory. It's uh, something my wife heard on uh, TikTok that she doesn't agree with. But I guess a lot of large, like, there's a big epidemic of homelessness in uh, L.A. Everywhere. You know, it's just so bad where they're, like, pooping on the sidewalk and pitching tents in front of the businesses and stuff. Mm. And I guess a lot of big businesses, like, I guess insurance companies won't insure houses anymore that are in the L.A. area. And, uh... Businesses are starting to pull out of LA, and so everybody's starting to say like, "Oh, something's coming! Something's coming!" The insurance companies know that uh, something's coming. That's why they won't insure the properties. Aliens. Oh, are we going back to that one? Nephilim. Nephilim are coming back for the homeless people. The homeless people are all are the descendants Nephilim. of the Nephilim. Oh my gosh! That's it. Why didn't we put it together before? <laughs> this has been in front of our faces for years. The Nephilim and the Antichrist are going to rise in LA right there. Hollywood undead. We're going we're to have a fantastic episode title. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to devise this and come up with a great thumbnail. Holy crap. I'd imagine LA is probably a pretty good representation of Sodom and Gomorrah. So mm-hmm. oh, yeah. that would make sense. I mean, if you put the words together, Sodom and Gomorrah and... You can Los get LA. Angeles. It smells Los Angeles. Yeah, for Lodum sure. Lodum and so many Zagora. You flip them around, you turn it inverse, put it up against a mirror, and they're exactly the same. Like or some Gamora could be Latin for Los Angeles. It is. Something like well, that. it is, but I wasn't going to bring that up. Yeah. It's way too on the nose. Oh. This is all available on Wikipedia, by the way. <laughs> yeah, look it up. This is the Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. Also, hi, uh, dear reader, have you been what you've been reading? You've visited this page seventy five times in the past two months. You should donate. Give us a dollar. I'm glad you understood what I was trying to do there. Um, F R E E. That spells free. Free credit, credit report. Rate. And if I take, Tom, Tom, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's a classic. I know it's. I, I had. <laughs> If I take 10 shots and one makes it and the nine miss that one that made it was worth it. So that's, that's kind works. of my life motto. Yeah. I mean, exactly. Oh. it. That's exactly how it works. Eventually one day you're going to have a kid. If you just keep trying, keep calling that stork. Okay. That's stupid. We're not, we're not like an actual kids podcast, but like, come on. All right. So this new game we're playing. <laughs> yeah, we've started. You just absolutely cannot get your hand off that sound I've got to do it on every segue, my guy. <laughs> every That's one. just our thing. Um, yeah, we're playing The Wolf Among Us, a game that came out in 2013. It is a game by Telltale Games. It's my first Telltale game. I know they've made a few others, like The Walking Dead, and I've always heard great things about them. And so far, I'm seeing why. We're having a... We played uh, episode one, which was devised of... Devised of? Uh... Divided into five chapters. Comprised? Oh, there you go. Compri- well, it comprises five chapters. There's other words you can use in life. It's pretty cool. English is wacky. And um, so we've kind chapters. of, oh yeah, we, it was segregated into five chapters. Each one of them was a different nationality. We don't believe in that here, and that didn't happen oh. in the game. <laughs> um, and uh, so basically, yeah, it's a pretty cool game so far. We're enjoying it. Uh, Andrew was the one who decided on this one and we went with it. We kind of like kind of do it that way. Like one of us comes up with an idea and if the rest of us haven't played it and also are interested and also usually if it's not too, too expensive, we're like, let's do it. So that's what we chose for this one. Balsamic vinaigrette. We okay. all like, I know that we have a podcast called my mom has Tourette's and we all joke that one of our moms has Tourette's <laughs> and that every one of us says I our mom has Tourette's. Going. But I really think everyone here could just use context clues to figure out whose mom actually has Tourette's. Just by the way that their son acts. If one of our moms dies while we're still doing this podcast, we're going to have a real rough episode. Mm-hmm. No, because at that point, we could just start making up stories. Can we just... No one to back them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Um, are we just going to like continue the podcast and then like keep making these mom jokes, even though one of them. Yeah. Because at the beginning of every episode, it'd be like in a memorum of one of our mothers, rest in peace, but not tell them which one died. Got him. (laughs) (laughs) Just lie. 
<laughs> you, you know, I was already the one who tried to get us to do a live episode at the wedding, so I'd probably be the one to try to be like, "Hey guys, live Let's event here." Well, no, I think <laughs> this is fan- no, this is a, we're on a really good track here because if one of our moms dies, we're gonna change the podcast name to "My Mom Is Dead" podcast, and we're gonna all say that our mom is dead, but we're not gonna say which one is dead. And it's gonna go to well, GameStop, and they're gonna be I like, am- "Sorry, one of your mothers died." Yeah, I'm just going to say now, Mom, I apologize because I know you're going to yell at me for saying I would live stream your funeral <laughs> anyways. So that I figure is... I'll at least apologize now before you uh, read me out you, later. Moms. No regrets. <laughs> no regrets. Anyways. The Wolf yeah, Among so Us was a good time. The Wolf Among Us. It was. I Indeed. got some notes, but who wants to start? Andrew. Uh, I mean, I mean, sure, I can start. So. I pu- I did pull up kind of like a quick walkthrough because I really wanted to go over kind of the, the choices story. we made. No, because actually, that's the, fair. That's fair. That's because idea. obviously the um the biggest point in Telltale Games is your choices matter. And once we concluded our last game, uh, since Josh mentioned it on the podcast that he was kind of really disappointed that it felt like his choices didn't have didn't carry much weight at the end uh that's why i wanted to suggest one of these because while uh you know josh will probably say this is another walking simulator right now um it's a mouse you know that's true the point and click Um, adventure but uh you know this is definitely something where all of your choices matter uh so that's why the toad (laughs) <laughs> no, 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 listen, listen to me, listen to me right now, if there's anything you take from this game, frog people, they're wonderful, I'm, I'm so in love, why do you hate it, and the little so, kid with the little boy voice, oh my gosh, I'm ready so for first of all, TJ, yeah, Toad Jr., oh, cutest thing in the world, yes he is, but, uh, to preface, you know, this, the story is basically all of the fairy tale fables, um, have to, they, for an undisclosed reason at this time, they basically left Fable Town, you know, all their little stories that they were in, and uh, they decided to live amongst the the normies. I can't remember what they call them in the game, but Mondays. it's another term. Mondays, yeah. Mundane. So, so yeah. So they, the uh, you know, they have to have these, they can live uh, amongst the people so long as they have uh, disguising magic called glamour, mm-hmm. and they have to buy it so often if they can't like conjure magic themselves Apparently and it's whatnot. Not cheap, and it is not cheap indeed. That's right. Um, but uh, so the story—that's basically the story—is either you know you're you're a fable who integrates with society and does it secretly, or you go out to what's called the farm, which we've only heard bad things about so far. Um, and so your main POV that, character is. The big bad yes. wolf. Uh, yes, you the... find out it's the big bad wolf. He is what? the quote sheriff. It seems of mm-hmm. this whole little uh, community that the the fable folk have built, and so you you pretty much enter, finding out that yeah, you're the big bad wolf, uh, and you get to go visit Mister Toad. Um, mm. How does that start out, Nathan? How was your little adventure with Mister Toad since you love him so much already? I just think they're adorable and hilarious. They're just a little three foot toad. Just, I don't know. I mean, I feel like a lot of choices in this game lead to very similar dialogue, but then some, there are some things that actually matter and will probably pan out more mm-hmm. later in the game. Whenever it says like this character will remember this or this character appreciated this or whatever, because you could One just, thing, you could choose yeah. to play like this entire game where you're just a huge jerk. You immediately go to violence in every situation that, that possibly pulls up the chance that violence could violence could occur. I'm scared that Josh did that. And or you can like just be as like super cool, calm, collected as possible and just be like, yeah, dude, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. But you start off, you know, you go into this uh, this building. It's like past midnight. And uh, there you walk in. It said that. Is it on the screen? before? Yeah, it's like it's sometime way. after midnight, I think yeah. is what it says. Yeah, so he and pulled you, up in the taxi. You walk in. Yeah, he he just takes a taxi over. I don't remember if he got like a call or what, but he goes to Mr. Toad's apartment. He walks in the front door. Mr. Toad's like kind of hunched over, looking up the stairs, like all like ooh. And you walk in, and he goes like, "Oh, what's his name? Rigby? Bigby? What? Bigby? Big, as big in Big Bigby. Bad Wolf? Yeah. yeah, I just got that. Bigby? Yeah." Yeah, I'm pretty stupid. on the nose there. Um, <laughs> shut your mouth, okay? I didn't think about it. 
So you have a conversation with Mr. Dude, and you, you, he's just like, yeah, I'm staring at a three-foot toad. Uh, I was like, this is not good, because that's the problem. I definitely like that, that, I like that option. option as well. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot, um, because it's just like, dude, the whole, I mean, the whole point is that if you are in this city, you have to have a glamour. Glamour? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And you have to use it on you and your family, whatever. If you're an, ex- if you're an existing, like a sentient being, you have to have a glamour. If you are a fable, because otherwise you look like an animal or something. And the Mundies don't like that or something. Um, I don't know if that's fully understood yet as to like why it's so important, but you pretty much like have to look like a person, like a human being. And um, yeah, Mr. Toad looks like really... a toad. Yeah. It really yeah. just seems like they're stressing, uh, that they want to integrate into society. Yeah. They really don't yeah, want yeah. people to know they're there. Ideally. Um, which from what you can, what, what's shown so far, if someone has a glamor, you could not even tell that they're not a person. So like, it's very, it's just, you look like a person. It basically is. Mm. You have a disguise, but apparently it's expensive and you have to keep buying it or something. So poor, poor Mr. Toad can't afford it for his family. So you, you show up and you're like, yeah, dude, you got to get a glamour. You got to get on this or we're going to have to take you to the farm. The farm is a place. It's basically a prison, but it's for fables who can't afford or refuse to get glamours to integrate into society. And uh, so you're kind of just having this conversation with him, but you're just like, you're not like immediately just sending him out. I don't know if that was an option, but I'm not a jerk. So I was like, yeah, you got to take care of this. And, um, I don't remember exactly what happens next. So if you want to continue from there, but I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know how many you go upstairs are, to the apartment and yeah. then you hear them yelling. Oh yeah. You pick up matches off the ground and then I just open the door. Cause like I'm the sheriff. So like, I don't care. So I open the door. Then, uh, the woodsman is arguing with a prostitute. Yeah. That was the premise for why he was there. The toad yeah, called yeah. him. Yeah, okay. And he, you know, he was like, the woodsman is doing something crazy. He's making a lot of noise, blah, blah, blah. You know, you need to go check it out or else he's going to blow our cover. And you could hear it. Thing. Yeah, you could hear it while you're in there. And yeah. you just walk on up. Josh just kicks the door down. Uh, I at least knocked. But, you know, that's me. And then, um, and then walk right in. Yeah, I just walked slap right in. A, he slapped a prostitute. And your mm-hmm. character is not a fan of that. Oh, I, I beat the crap all. out of him. Pretty sure we it's all so, did. Oh, yeah. You you definitely have to fight him no matter what. There I are certain least, story beats you nice always get first, to no you know? matter what. Yeah, oh, yeah, same. But at the same no time, doubt. I was like, I was, I got, I mean, you jump right in there because the guy just slapped her. And mm-hmm. This guy's very drunk. I was like, dude, you're drunk. Chill out. And he's just, he gets worse. Yeah, and then you get a bunch of quick time offense. You break his fingers. It's a fun time. I was you really know, thrown off. I, right mm-hmm. I was not expecting mm-hmm. the quick time. I didn't realize I'd never played a game like this, and so I was like, "Oh crap! Click, click." Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm integrated into that part of the society. I, I, I started was... the fight mm-hmm. as soon as he looked at me. And goes, you know how this ends. You know what happened the last time we fought. <laughs> Josh was like, "Knuckle up, boys." <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. my, that's all I needed. Yeah, I am. Um, I know that uh, I was really thrown off because I didn't play it on PC before, and so when the prompts came up, like W is uh, like WASD is obviously like directional buttons in most games, but I saw both like the arrow and the letter. So I'm sitting here like trying to touch them both at the same time, getting screwed <laughs> up at times because I'm an idiot. So like the first time I tried to duck and I hit up, and then I was like, "Crap, that that's was wrong. hilarious." Yeah, and then I was like, oh, there's a little letter in some of these. So I definitely mm. may or may not have went back to restart that little segment so I, I didn't look you. like a fool. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you pretty much fight the woodsman. Um, it's an interesting fight scene. You gotta, you, you know, first of all, Josh, were you going to use the axe? Were you going to just hack at him in his head? Because I feel like that's I that's don't what know. I don't know. It didn't really give it didn't give you the option to like the end of the fight and it like you look down and it's like all right I want you to pick it up and then he picks it up and he like hits him with the side of it to knock him out. Yeah, I see. I figured I, you would did, just try. Was to Was there pick an it up option to actually it. like try to kill him with it? I don't remember. There's not. I'm okay. pretty sure you can just choose to pick it up or not. Yeah. And yeah, 
But uh, yeah, yeah. So that this, was and this woodsman. A fun time. He's like a huge, bald with huge beard, lumberjack like like Josh, but he's also Josh. super, yeah. but like even more jacked. Like Josh yeah. is jacked and beautiful, but he was like even more jacked and like probably and honestly course, taller. Like this is a big man. This is a big wall he's of a, a man. Big boy. He's all jacked up on Mountain Dew, and he comes at you, and it's it's it just one, I worked two, with the guy three, who did that. four, just throwing him against the wall, throwing him against the chair, back and forth. If you hit all the quick time events, you generally have the upper hand in the fight, but he gets lots of good hits on you too, and it mm-hmm. gets to the very end. Um, doesn't he go for the axe? Yeah. And then you like, you like basically dodge yeah. it or whatever, and you knock it out of his hand and you grab it and you hit yeah, him in yeah. the face real hard with it. And then you throw him out the window. Oh yeah. That was, you get thrown out the window. Yeah, does he do fall. it? Yeah. You, you fall together. You both oh, he yeah, charges yeah. you and you, you fall to, through the window. Yeah, yeah. Cause before that you start talking to the girl for a yeah, little bit. Yeah. I forgot about and, that. That he hit. So, and then he gets back you know, out. You're, you can ask what her name is and stuff, and you're trying to have this conversation, and he's trying to talk to you with a broken jaw, and obviously not he's doing like, very you well. Broke my jaw. Yeah, and so like right before you both go out the window, you know, there's like a dialogue option, and you can either just throw them out, or you can like yell at yell at them to stop. And I chose the uh, the one that was, "Will you excuse me for a moment, ma'am?" I did that and too. then I get thrown out the window. <laughs> yeah. I get tossed out the window. She was like, yeah, sure. I can let you do that. And then of course, what else do you do, but land on Mr. Toad's car who already can't afford anything. He walks out my car. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, you know, you just look at him. I was like, how's your insurance? Exactly what I said. I feel like, (laughs) I think we chose all the same options in this game. It seems that way. And then, uh, you know, he obviously he's still out there. He starts to continue the fight and dude, I forgot because I'd only played episode one previous to this. I completely forgot about the uh, the quick time event. I'm sitting there smashing, smashing the Q button for what feels like an eternity. I did too. And then, that was weird. And I'm like, yeah. And I I'm just sitting fingers. there and I'm like, no. Oh, you did. Because I was like, I can press quicker with this hand. So I like I reached over. Oh, yeah. I, went, I moved here. it over and I like I, I, I did the whole. I don't know if any, any, any of you can do it, but like. I can really quickly like vibrate my finger to like hit something really quick, literally really fast. I have to like, it's hard to explain how, but I did that to do it as quickly as possible. And Josh does not have any clue what I'm talking about and thinks I'm some kind of freak, but I did that to do it as quickly as possible. And then I was, it was just full and just stuck there and not doing anything. And then it started going back down. I was like, what do you want me to do? What? And I forgot it like has to fail you. And I'm just like, bro, I'm just, not fair so so much i was yeah i was highly disappointed speaking of weirdos though do you still have that magnet you know what i'm talking about it's you not do. as magnetized anymore i have to learn if there's a way to like remagnetize it Re- i can't yeah. i can't like pick up uh, i can't pick up uh that's something we can bring paper up clips. actually and uh yeah i can't pick up paper clips anymore it's very sad but i i, I you can remagnetize magnets you can make them stronger again i just have to learn how and actually do it that uh, that Safe. comment you made, the all jacked up on Mountain Dew, mm-hmm. is that from a YouTube video? No, it's just it's like from, it's from Grown Ups or something. I don't. It just yeah, came to my mind and I said, oh, yeah. because the guy who got famous for it on YouTube, I used to work with him. Who? Nice. Uh, I'll I'll look up the video and send it to okay. you. It was for it was originally from a movie. I want to say in like the eighties. I think was it? Was that just a reused line? Mm-hmm. I think so. Um, but yeah, so that fight ends whenever you're like struggling to not die against the huntsman. And then all of a sudden his, uh, Woodsman. his nice ax decided to be rested in the back of his skull by the yeah, prostitute. The Woodsman, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, she's a working girl. Not we don't confirmed. know her name by now, so we're just well. Okay, sure. It, not by this point, but like I feel like there are context clues, and we're just calling her the oh, prostitute. Sure. We don't have a name for her, so she shows Indeed. up and just out of nowhere. And uh thing about um, this world is we learn that the fables are a little bit stronger, a little bit more durable than the average human. Yeah, He has I'm an axe in the skull, there with a, yep. and I'm just talking Indeed. to her, and he's dragging himself away, like, across the ground. <laughs> like, he's he not, even he doesn't, stepped on it. Right? Oh, she yeah. Oh, at one point, she like... Did you, did you let her just keep going? Or did no, you I told her to stop. I made her stop. Yeah, I was I like, too. okay, he's had enough. Josh, did you let her go or did you tell oh. her to stop? 
I probably just, I let her do what she wanted to do. I supported her actions. <laughs> I was nice. trying to make I was trying to make things work with her. A strong, independent woman. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I, was, so, I was devastated which, later on. Which you know, you do find out that she is some sort of uh, worker okay. of the night. Uh, she was she there, to, was get there money. to get money from the woodsman. The woodsman or huntsman? Because I always confuse them. Woodsman. The woodsman. Yeah, okay. because one of the options, like I think at one point, it's like select your suspect, and it said the woodsman. Yeah, uh, you're right. You're right. But uh, so yeah, you talk to her a little bit. And, you know, she's you're like trying to get for who she works for. And she says that her lips are sealed. She won't tell you. Um, and then, of course, you know, you find out she was supposed to get a hundred bucks from him. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I being the swell man that I am gave Me her the only seven dollars that I had. Fifty eight. Like, yeah. That's all I have. But hopefully it helps. She's like, you really don't have to. And I was just like, just 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 accept it. And then she's yeah. like, I'll come over to your apartment later. And he's like, how do you know where I live? She's like, everybody knows that you live in the smallest apartment. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's really great. Yeah. That's super helpful. And then pretty yeah. much she leaves. And then you, isn't that just right when you go back to the hotel? You go to your apartment, apartment and you kick the pig hotel. out. Yeah, you get well, to talk to old Colin. <laughs> yeah. Man, he was creepy. So Freaking creepy. You walk into your, your, your apartment and you, I guess... Well, wasn't didn't he fall asleep or did he just walk right in and go to the kitchen and then he went to the there? kitchen? Okay. He went to the kitchen. Okay, that's what it was. No. He went to the kitchen and then you like open the fridge and stuff and you're he's just like I ain't got nothing in here. And then you walk around yeah. and you walk, 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 walk to the living room and there's this huge fat pig asleep on your on your couch or your chair. Turns out he's Colin, who is apparently one of the three little pigs. <laughs> So that's cool. And I guess he breaks out of the farm regularly and comes and visits you. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. That's it. Indeed. It's kind of high. And the funny, the funny thing is, uh, Bigsby, your character goes to light a cigarette and the pig is like, Oh, I want one too, man. And then you go, you put a cigarette in his mouth because he can't use it for him. Yeah. yeah, And then he goes, a couple thousand more of these and it'll make up for the house. You owe me. Yeah. (laughs) It's that was funny. A, uh, they do, they seem to be doing a lot of those little callbacks. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, you have I was a nice little a... conversation with him. Go ahead, Nathan. I'm sorry. Oh, and by, uh, we forget before we enter the house, before we enter the uh, the apartment building in the first place, you see a certain someone hiding in the bushes outside of it. A certain someone named mm-hmm. Beauty from Beauty and the Beast, and you kind of question her. And she's like, Which, she's like, please, please, big me, please just trust me. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell my husband. She's married to the beast in this, and the beast is like has a glamour too. Um, but she's just like, just like, uh, just trust me, okay? Just like you, you got to keep this between us. And I, I promised her that I would because I. Which she, I was going to say that was probably the genuine. first big choice that you would have to make. It seems, yeah, you know, like that's going to have repercussions one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Did you say anything, Josh? Okay, so when yeah, you I enter the apartment building, by. yeah, exactly. But when you enter the apartment building, you go to the elevator, and Beast comes out. And he stops and he's you like, immediately. He's like, he's <laughs> like, have you seen Beauty? Like, he seems kind of upset because he doesn't know where she is. And I lied to him because I Me did too. tell her. Oh, that. you lied! I did. What, what did you do? You, did Josh? you tell him? I didn't. I said no. Nah, I didn't see her. Uh, you both lied. I I told him the same thing. I told Beauty. I just said I'm staying out of this. Oh, is <laughs> that what you problem. said? I don't want to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not getting on the bad side of a guy named Beast. That is going to bite me in the butt if I do that. Yeah, so, that's yeah, fair. I just that's said, no, nope, uh, I'm staying out of this. This is your guys' problem. I should have said that because then it keeps me from lying. It just keeps me from doing any making any decision, really. But that's, that's um, it. Because it does say that like it does give you the thing like you chose to lie to him or something mm-hmm. like that at the top. So yeah. I feel like that's going to come back to bite me somehow. Those are, yeah, those are um, always fun to see because you're just like every time, whether it's good or bad, you're just like, oh. Uh, here we Every go. Every time I talk to Toad, it goes, he'll remember that. He'll remember that. <laughs> he has a Dude, good memory. You, Toad's going to hate you. <laughs> Dude, Toad later on, I swear. Um, but we that's when you go up, meet Colin in the apartment. You have this whole conversation with him. You give him a smoke. Then you give him a drink later. Um, well, you have a choice, too. I don't know why you wouldn't, but maybe because he's a pig and yeah. it might hurt him. But um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't. I mean, you kind of have a whole just conversation. It's kind of like a little bit of like world building, character building in there, and then yeah, that's pretty much it. You, I don't remember what happens next. So someone can pick it up. You pretty much pass out on the recliner. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you get a knock at the door. Oh. Yeah, and okay. it was who? Good old Snow White. Good old Snow White. And there's there is also a little bit of dialogue with Colin where he mentions that the way that um. The way that Bigby looks at Snow White, like he mentions that, like he has a thing for her. That I, yeah, I'm he's still like, like shut important. up. <laughs> Pretty much. Shut up. No, I don't. <laughs> you take it, bitch. And as, soon as, as soon as he knows it's her, he's like, yes, ma'am. Hello. Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> so she shows up Maybe and she's, <laughs> she's real freaked out. She's like, she saw something or something's going on. You don't know what, but she's like, you have to come with me now. And you're like walking down the hallway to go, go to the elevator or whatever, to go back down to where she's taking you. You're following her. You you're talking with her. You're trying to figure out what's going on. And she just, she doesn't really give you any information. Um, and, uh, you end up getting to the, 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 the lobby and then you step outside to the front. Like there's a few, like a couple sets of small sets of steps right up in front of the, the actual like doors to the apartment building. And you go out there and you see a small, like a little, like a little, a little small, like kind of like a head, maybe like the size of a human head uh, shaped object on the ground on like the stairs. And you get closer and there's blood. It's a human. It's a human head. It's uh, um, <laughs> like how you tried to dance around it. It's shaped like a human head. Oh, yep. It's a head. <laughs> the prostitute from earlier who you later in the story find out's name is Faith because you start. So I'm going to start saying she, her name is Faith. She was beheaded and her head was left on the front steps of this apartment building. And, and this is where this you get seems to be very yeah. much intentional. And it looks so bad on the woodsman. The immediate thing you think is the woodsman who was just fighting with this girl and just slapped her. And then I came and beat him up. He's super drunk. He's probably still drunk. And she hit him in the head with an ax. Why wouldn't he want revenge? Seems so like clear motive to me. Immediately, you're like, I mean, you 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 decide to look around. Snow White is like, she said she didn't see anybody or whatever. Um, you you kind of question her a bit about it, and you you look around uh, the the area outside, and you actually find like a small blood trail, and you find some blood on like a fence or on the side of the building, and so it seems as though somebody jumped the fence, got their leg cut on the fence because there's a small scrap of like jeans, it's like some kind of fabric mm-hmm. on the ground and they must have left the head and left. Um, but you actually even compare it directly in front of her to snow white's like dress or skirt or whatever she was wearing. And he's like, can't be too careful. But, um, she's, she's like, yeah, whatever. I get it. But, um, so that kind of is the whole, the, the whole all of chapter one and probably further, but is is all about like you you kind of looking into this now. So you end up going to the station. Well, I don't. What was the building that you went to? Well, yeah, I was gonna say I know that. Uh, so you in that scene, that was the you first didn't go time. to a building. It's the same building that you live in. Was it? Yeah, because if at the end of that whole scene with the building, when you come back, back out, inside. you come down the very very same steps. But uh, that was the first time that you get to, like, actually actively investigate and, yeah. like, try to surmise a crime scene, which is where Andrew's crackpot theory comes in. Can't go a game without a crackpot no, theory. Um, so, like, whenever I was investigating the head, I was like, okay, well, let's see what's going on. You know, they found the, like, her ribbon that she had pointed out. You know, earlier in the conversation, she was like, my lips are sealed. And it was like really obvious that like she wasn't going to say anything. And then mm. she was like, do you like my bow? Do you like my bow? She had like a purple and, ribbon wrapped around her, her neck. Yeah, like her a, ribbon. Yeah. Yeah. And so the fact that that was stuffed in her throat, I was or in her mouth. I was like, hmm, I'm wondering. So my crackpot theory is that like somebody wants to keep her, you know, hush, hush. Don't want her to say something or do something or other. And, uh. Beheading you know, that. immediately because the hunt, the huntsman, woodsman, the woodsman, sorry, um, since he was the the easy suspect, my gamer brain was like, no, nah, fam, it ain't going to be this guy. Of course, not. that's too easy, too easy. Way too so easy. I was like, hmm, 
and then crackpot theory came in because they mentioned you know you get to take a nice good look at the bloody stump of the neck and they were like hmm what could make a cut like this and i was like hmm it's a good point because if it were the woodsman that i'm assuming it would be that axe that he has and that you know that probably leave a nice clean cut all the way through. You know, he's obviously strong enough to take on the big bad wolf. I don't think cutting through the nape of a 20 something year old's neck would be too hard to work for him. Probably just take one solid swing. And it was kind of like, it wasn't like an even cut. They made it look like kind of jaggy. So what I'm thinking crackpot theory could be very wrong, but we're in this world of magic right now, right? We got all these fairy tale characters who need magic to like even look like normal people. The fact that this woman said, hey, my lips are sealed. And then, of course, we'll get to it in a minute. But you hear that phrase again. Um, so that's, it's obvious at that point there was some sort of like enchantment on her to make her not talk. I'm thinking that that ribbon, like if she were to take it off, it was going to remove her head. And I think that's what happened. I think that that ribbon was something like magical item that was probably like a fail safe for like, Hey, if you don't do what I say, this ribbon comes off and your head comes off with it. I kind of like and that so, a lot. Yeah. So, so I'm like, that's what I'm thinking and why they stuffed it in the mouth. I'm sure it's just for story purposes, just to be like, Ooh, or something, you know, I don't, I'm not again, crackpot theory. These <clears throat> aren't fully thought out, but like, I'm thinking that has something to do with it. And we're going to find out. Uh, and they also mentioned, uh, uh, he mentioned to like go see a witch if you can't afford like the good stuff glamour earlier. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if like maybe she actually like owed someone money or something and like had to make a bad deal with a witch or something. I don't know, but I'm thinking that ribbon has an important part. That's that's what I'm thinking. I like that because they do call attention to it Thanks. first, and then you find it they again. Do. So that's that's a good that's a good call. Um, you look like you have something to say, Josh, or yeah. am I crazy? Okay. I'm crazy. Yeah. Cool. You are crazy. Just a little bit. So what happens uh, after that? Uh, after that, they go into... Uh, go ahead, Josh. They go see the cranky Ichabod and then the whole thing in there. Yeah. So you go see... Oh, what was his name? What was the cute little flying monkey's name? Buffett? Bump Bumpkin? Blum Bumpkin. Bum Bumpkin. Flumpkin the Blumpkin? I don't know. It's Blumpkin um, to Popkin. Yeah, no. Bluffkin? <laughs> no. Uh, Bluffkin. Buffkin. But yeah, they go into like that. It, it seemed more like a library, like a huge hall. What was um, it supposed to it, be again? It was supposed to be offices. Okay. You know, he went to the, because he's the sheriff, and he went to the office. There was that little scene where like you cut in front of a guy, and he's like, oh, must be oh, yeah. all nice to be high and mighty. Um. But yeah, he was supposed to go into like Ichabod's office and it was like a library or something. It was nuts. But uh, so they're like, well, we need to find out what this lady's real name is. And so they're like, hey, little monkey dude, go find these books so we can try to find out what her name is. Because she's obviously a fable and she's not a, a person. Mm. Uh, so, so yeah, that while they're kind of trailing off and, you know, Snow White gets a phone call. Um, you are really ticked off at Ichabod Crane, no matter how many ways you look at it. Um, he's very grumpy. He's grumpy. Now I understand why he lost his head. Mm. I don't like Good him. Good call. Yeah, I don't like him either. Um, but he's yeah, so a you massage can, and needed a bottle of wine. Yeah, which, can we talk about that for a second? My man's definitely involved. I don't know if he was involved with Faith. But my man's definitely involved in some prostitution himself. The freaking nasty guy. Gotta go bring a bottle of wine to go get a massage. Yeah, that sounds a little suspect to me for a guy who's in his at least, well, who's probably in his fifty thousands, but looks like he's in his fifties. I really enjoy that we find out that the the bottle of wine that um Snow White was supposed to have been brought, <laughs> Buffkin was just he was just drinking yeah. it. He was just he's just a big drunk flying he's monkey. A, is he God? <laughs> She gets but, mad at him and takes it away from him. And then later on, you just kind of like use the magic mirror and see Buffkin out in the corner, just drinking the alcohol. <laughs> and that was, that yeah. was where you also discover, oh, 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 oh. um, discover that phrase that gets uttered again. The, my lips are sealed nonsense by talking to the, the magic mirror. 
because they do eventually find her. I don't. I guess they found her name. I just remember them calling like the Donkey Girl or something like that. Well, there was like that some. Was there was hilarious. some kind of like lore books and stuff. Hilarious. I know what you're going to say. That was terrible. Yeah. Um, that, no, there was some lore Donkey books Girl, that other they known went as through. this, yeah. other known as this. Yeah. <laughs> and the started laughing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we learned that she's like some old fable from. I don't even remember. I, is she a real fable or is this made up for this story? So I feel like that's I've what I was going to ask. Are made all made these up. fables yeah. real? Or most of them? Most of no, them. Most of them are. But yeah, you this see Tweedle one, D and Tweedle Dumb later. Like, yeah. I feel like this one might have been put in just for I've never heard of this the one. story because yeah. I'd never try yeah. looking it up. But um, yeah, it looks like I mean, basically, we find out that Faith, the the prostitute from the very beginning, she uh, had she's she you find out in this place like from some lore book or whatever about the fables that she had moved to this area with her husband, who's like a prince. But they ended up falling on hard times and they were having a hard time just like uh, integrating into this society and whatnot. And so they were kind of like on the outs on the outskirts and kind of forgotten about. And then they were not making money and her husband fell into a deep depression. And then she ended up starting to make money via prostitution, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But um, basically that's kind of where she found herself and where you found her in that whole scene with the woodsman. And then the bad crap went down after, um, the worst crap. Indeed. But so then you end up learning her name and you go to the mirror, good old magic mirror. And you ask to see her and he's like, yeah, there's uh, some kind of enchantment keeping me from, from showing you her. And it's real. Like, oh, Donkey Skin is a French literary fairy tale written in verse by Charles Perrault. It was first published in 1695 in a small volume and republished in 19, 1697. It's pretty well, cool. Miniature sidebar. That uh, is a really weird fairy tale when they explain it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, Anyways, go on. I'm sorry, Nathan. No, you're good. Uh, and then you ended up using the magic mirror. I mean, these are all things that you could choose not. Some of these things are things you could choose not to do, I think. But you end up looking and seeing her husband. And you see him sitting in a chair with a bloody knife on the ground and, like, blood all over him. I'm so fine. then you're just like, we have to go find the husband. And then... Right. Um, then you get a call from, I think, right about that time. You go to, you're going to leave and you get a call from Toad. And Toad is like freaking Old out. Toad. Toad's like freaking out and then like saying, like, he starts talking to someone and then the, the, the it gets cut or whatever. <laughs> and so you have to make a decision if you're, which one you're going to go to. If you're going to go to the, go to, go to Mr. Toad's house again, go to his apartment again. If you're going to go to the, the prince's house, um, uh, I don't remember his name, but it's Faith's husband, Lawrence. Lawrence. Which did you guys choose, Lawrence? Because I, I chose to go to Toads house. first. Yeah, all of us went to Toads first. Nice. It sounded. Nice. It seemed more per well, at pertinent at the moment because it sounded like he just got attacked or something. But well, they were yeah, both. They were the both picture, important. Looked I don't like know. To the dude looked, was dead. Yeah, so in I the mirror, like, it looked like yeah, it didn't look good. So I was like, I was well, like, that body's not going to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Did either of you guys? Examine the room the enough to find the tarot cards. Yeah, yes, I, got, I picked I up the last the, one too. Did you pick up the tarot card? Okay. Yeah, I thought that was interesting because knowing very little that I do about that stuff, um, they showed the strength card, which is supposed to be um, like overcoming a hard time. I know supposedly. nothing about tarot, so. And then they showed the tower card which was supposed to simplify like things are going to get much much worse so i feel like that was a slight bit of foreshadowing but uh you know only because i looked into what that stuff meant because i was like <laughs> i'm willing to bet this is uh oh, this I'm is sure probably key yeah yeah i'm sure they did this so and then you picked up the what i'm just gonna assume is death because it was just a dude with a bunch of arrows back and i was like that doesn't look too good it wasn't great and no. kept it he yeah, did hold on to that it. one and not the other two. It was very odd, but um, you know, he can do what he wants. He's an adult, and uh, so you end up going to Mister Good Old Toad's house. I beat the with crap Snow out of White. Him. Snow White is oh, in, in on this with you. You vile human being! Oh my gosh! You beat up Mister Toad! Oh my gosh! Okay, uh -uh. so you end up going there, and you um, you're like looking downstairs or whatever, and then you go upstairs and you go into his house. 
And I don't remember how the interaction begins. Like, was he outside his house or do you enter? And no, you go in, in the door and you he's like in, talking. Yeah. Like you his can part hear of the, the son crying. Oh, yeah. You enter the apartment mm-hmm. building and you just hear like a kid crying like a lot. Yeah. And then you end up going to the door and opening it. And like he, he's standing there with his son and the someone's like obviously crying. And then you kind of like have a conversation and Snow White kind of um, what goes to see what was the kid's collection. He had a collection of something and she goes to ask. She well, asks he had a to collection show. of insects. He had a weevil. He had a he weevil. Had, said, I have a weevil. This kid was so happy <laughs> um, that someone was interested. So she goes into the other room and he shows her the weevil collection. And that's how kind of I don't know why, but that's just how the rest of the game played. You ended up taking the POV of Snow White showing him the with this kid showing her the weevil collection and he keeps like trying every time you try to leave he's like no please what? stay please stay my dad's please beating stay me. i've got more my dad weevils. is beating me i have more weevils to show you please don't don't leave i need you here and then it says chapter two it was weird this is what happens when you don't choose violence josh no, that was a lie. None of that happened. Um, but <laughs> when you enter the building uh, and she goes in with a uh, good old kid in the other room, you, you are slam like, the door shut and you beat the father. No, that is not <laughs> what I did. Absolutely not. I was like, I, I don't like you, dude. You- <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. Okay. So I'm like, look at the toad was going to immediately you. start looking around the room and you're just like, yeah, there's something weird going on here. There's like a broken vase on the ground. There's Why, a blood stain on the wall. Lying. There's oh, yeah. um, handprints there's on the windowsill of the window. Now. There's like a, 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 just an empty table in the corner with a, a circle in it and dust around the circle. Very obviously something was sitting on it and it no longer was. The lamp was over by a table and he's lying through his do they have teeth lying through his tongue? Um, long, big old long his tongue. Lips. Yeah, sure, whatever. Just lips, I guess. That's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Um, that whole time, like every every little thing you bring up that was super weird about his apartment was he's just like, oh yeah, this is what happened, and that's not he how cut he his hand. Talks. He, he cut a, his leg. Yeah, he's like he, and then you just look at his hand and there's no cut. You look at his feet and there's no cut, and there's uh, there's like a fireplace poker with blood all over it on the ground. And he's just like, oh, this is all normal. This is all normal. And he's trying his absolute darndest to like. I I was going to say I I think he thinks you're real story at the end. Yeah, the story at the end, he was like, yeah, funny thing. See, I actually cut my hand on the poker, which caused me to drop it on my foot. And then I forgot my keys. And uh, he just looks my door. And know. like the camera just shows his hands and feet and his hands and feet have no blood on them. Like this guy's stupid. He's a dumb toad. It was ridiculous. Like he just he was like backed against a corner, literally. And like not like oh my gosh. He just I don't know what wow. he was thinking. Like he was just gonna just deny, deny, deny. Um and it gets to the end. I feel like I tried everything. I like I, I, I kept telling him, I know you're lying. I need you to just tell me what happened because this looks really I tried bad. that too. I, I was trying I th- to be nice. I, I like tried to intimidate him. I even threatened him and he wasn't Ooh, doing anything. I did not. Because, like, he was not, listen, he wouldn't, like, no matter what, I looked at everything in the room, and nothing I did would get him to actually admit it. Every option that I, maybe I missed something, and you went the right way, but I, I listen, I click on something that says grab him, which obviously, it's like, it's not great, it's not the first option you would choose, except unless you're Josh, but grab him, and what he does is very different. Because when I click on grab him, he's like, all right, listen, I'm losing patience. And you get you run up to him and you grab him by both hands and you pick him up and start shaking him and like yelling at him. (laughs) Shaking baby syndrome. I feel like that was more violent than what I did. I went up and just started slapping him in the face. (laughs) 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 He did. He went up and he goes, stop lying. (laughs) Dude. And right when you do that, uh, Snow White and Snow White and opens TJ the door. The room. Yeah, and she's yeah. really unhappy with what I did, and had somehow slapping is better. Okay, but um, I'm just like trying to shake it out of him. But he, because he's, I don't know, like I, I wouldn't have chosen that, but I felt like I was, I had chosen all the options. I wanted to know what was going on, and I thought I had exhausted all options. Andrew, did you not have any sort of violence and still get him to answer? Yeah. Yeah, Dang so it. you it. you basically you just keep choosing non-violence and just being you're basically the whole time you're just like, come on, man, like 
he because he repeats the same phrase a couple times throughout the episode. He just says, like, I don't want to be here. You don't want me to be here. And that's kind of the road he takes the whole time. And then after, uh, you know, TJ comes out with Snow White and she's like, did you get anything? And he's like, no, he's not really saying much, but something's here, you know, kind of explains everything that he saw. And then so whenever he TJ goes to talk to his dad, he like bends over to like pick him up or say something to him. And then there's this like trail of blood on the back of him and Snow White notices it. So at that point, he takes his hat off. I didn't want to get violent. And so he takes his hat off and he's like, yeah, it's like, I guess I kind of have to come clean now. So then he tells you that it was, you know, some guy. I don't know. I don't remember if he mentioned the name of them at that point or not. Uh, but yeah, he's like, someone came in, threatened me and my kid, blah, blah, blah. He beat me up, bruised little TJ's oh, poor it was arms. Josh. It was Josh. Yeah. Jo- this guy named Josh came in. He bruised my kid's arm and smacked me around with a fire poker. <laughs> but yeah, he so he does explain and he says, uh, you know, they eventually you go back to Prince Lawrence's apartment. Mm-hmm. And you see that whole scene unfold. So, Josh, how did you handle that portion? What did you do? How did that go? You probably walked in and beat up the, the half dead guy. Oh, here's a corpse. Let me punch it. Uh, I went in, started looking around. Uh, I don't like the walking in the game because, like, it's very easy to just like get stuck on stuff. So, like, I kept getting stuck on the coffee table trying to get around. Bad walking um, simulator. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just looted the whole room and everything, and you just like find little keys, and then if you like, you walk in and the dude like you're talking to him and he like falls in on the ground. You pick him up. He's got like this wound here, but like you can't really see it because like it looks like someone like hit him in the head with a like a, a mallet. And this is mm-hmm. this is Lawrence. This is Faith's husband. You yeah. go to his apartment and you open the door because he's not answering because I I did try yeah, to yell in first. But yeah. The door's like slightly ajar. Oh boy. Oh, boy's yeah. done for. He's yeah, got he's a, been a nice wound. He's got. Yeah. I have a I have it a big rough. regret in this scene because there's something I didn't get to do because I didn't realize one thing would continue the story and let make you leave the apartment. Mm, no, Can you think of what it was. Um, so basically, yeah. Oh, by the way, you end up finding a note. Where does that note? How do you find the note? I was face? just going to I was going to ask in the if bed. You had, it's in the bed. Yeah. What is bed? that the part you missed? Yeah, I think that is. So you can go over to the wall on the left. Yeah, I didn't get the bed down. That's what that's what you did. There's just a note, but it's basically his uh, note saying he's you know sorry for not being able to provide for you. You know, it's better this way. Blah blah blah. Oh no! And, mm-hmm. and then you find out that yeah, he uh, he tried to off himself. So it was a suicide yeah. note. That's the thing. I don't yeah, learn that. My character doesn't learn this. Wall. Because I didn't open the thing because I decided to open the closet first. I mm. hate that I did that. Um, so that's terrible. Yeah, because Only there's crap. a gun and bullet That's not the note the I'm floor. talking about. I'm talking about the oh, note, note from Faith. Faith read, wrote to him that you bring gotcha. there, but he doesn't get to see it because he. Ew. Yeah. So you end up. Um, uh, did you did you read the note? That's the question. I, did. I didn't. Oh, why was yeah, it at I'm Toad's sorry. house? It was at Toad's house, wasn't it? Because Toad's like, we'll, we'll oh, go no, 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 no. You, no. You get the donkey costume out of the the oh, fireplace. Yeah. And it's there. Yeah, it's in that. Okay, so she left her donkey costume for Toad or something. And it just but, said, I'm sorry. Yeah, so it was just a note that reads, I'm sorry. I opened it because I was like, I feel like this is evidence in a, in a, a if she hadn't been killed, maybe I wouldn't have, but it just seemed like that's something a sheriff would probably do. I know you're not supposed to mess with mail, but if it's possible evidence in a case that of was, homicide, that was like, why I didn't open it. Cause I was just like, dog, that's an actual felony. I yeah, do it in my mind. I don't know enough about the law. I could be wrong, but in this situation, it seemed like that would be something that would be considered evidence. Yeah. I it would just, imagine. It, it just, it really, it just said, I'm sorry. That's all it said. Yeah. So in the whole time, like at least the way I'm playing big B wolf, he kind of, is the he's the sheriff that slightly operates outside of code, not necessarily a hundred percent up to par, you know, following all the rules and stuff. Pretty much, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I was just kind of like, you know what? That's one line I don't want to cross is trying to open someone's mail, and I don't want to just be thrown in jail as the sheriff. That'd be a real bad luck. Be hilarious. Um, so 
you you talk to the guy because you find out that he's like kind of still alive ish like one percent still alive and yeah, he's just which like, is why we're like fables can take a licking and keep on ticking man <laughs> this guy had a bullet wound to the lung I need, I need water so you end up walking over to the sink and you get him water and you bring him back and he drinks the water it's gripping i know and then magical she's like well if you have something to ask him you better ask him now so i asked Before him who, who did this to him and he goes faith and then dies so that sounds really wow bad too. really yeah that's what I, oh my gosh it's what did vastly you choose? different yeah what did you choose so so i talked to him did you say who you killed this whole did you kill faith did you ask him that no you don't at least in what i did you don't really ask him directly um you you have this conversation with him and he's like oh yeah he explains the uh the suicide letter that you find in the bed you actually get to talk and to him yeah i get, you get, well, I get two words out of him water and faith and then he dies yeah i got one word out of him and he died i'm so no, sad you, that i, I didn't had a get whole that conversation yeah nope. i had a whole conversation <sighs> with him and he's just explaining like the letter and everything um and you uh whenever you at the end of the conversation um you know because you're kind of the whole time you're kind of just like feeling bad because you have to break the news to him. Well, you have to choose whether you break the news to him that like your wife's dead, or if you're just like, "Hey, your wife's missing," or if you just like don't say anything at all about it. I hope you um, didn't say anything. So, so I did say something. I didn't just tell him his wife was dead, which I should have done because that have been completely truthful. But I kind of went with the half truth, half lie, and I was just like, "Hey, your wife's missing." That's kind Fold. of why we're here. And so he's, you know, whenever you tell him that he like starts breaking down and he's like freaking Georgie. And I was like, wait, who's Georgie? And at that point, someone tries to break into the. And I'm pretty sure that's where the similarities come back with the other with you two. OK, OK, because it's water. I walk over, get water. He drinks the water. She's like, oh, you want to ask him something? Now is the time. And I'm like, OK, um, what happened? He, or who did the student? He goes, faith and then kills over. And then you guys are like, well, crap, this is suck. This is big suck. And then you put the the le- the note in his hand because he never got to read it. Um, and that note had two words on it. We've talked about this. It was toad people. And uh, then I just kind of look around. I wish I had just not talked to him until I had pressed on everything in there because then I could have done the, the, um, the bed because I was looking around. I was like, okay, before I open the bed here, I'm going to go over and see if I missed everything over here. And I was like, okay, there's a closet. I wonder what's in the closet. And this big old, like, it's this like little, just short, really wide, like cubic looking dude just kind of jumps out of oh, the closet dang. and then sprints out the door. And then you just run after him immediately. You leave. Um, and you're chasing him like through multiple blocks and he, he like cl- goes up a fire escape or something like that. And you're like jumping across like the fire escape and tr- try to catch him. And then you um, end up like jumping on him and like falling off this building or whatever. And you like roll to a stop and then you get up and you're talking to him. You're like, you're like all completely out of breath. You're just like, why did you, why did you run? And um, the guy's just like, well, cause, cause you were, cause you were chasing me. And didn't make any sense at all. I immediately Big was suspicious idiot. of him. I mean, he was also covered in blood, so, you know, I was also suspicious of that. And in the apartment of a dead guy, but, you know. And with no knowledge that this guy killed himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that made it worse. Um, and so the guy's, like, on the ground and talking to me, and I'm, like, standing, and he's, like, trying to, he's just, like, uh, you're you're kind of talking with him. You're trying to figure out why he was there, what was he, what was he doing, whatever, and he said that he went to this dude to, like, talk to him about something and then someone I don't remember what he said if someone like attacked him or what I don't know what it was but um you like get to the point where he backs up to a wall and you 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 kind of walk continue like walking up to him and he stands up and you're just you're you're trying to like get some information out of him and he gets to a point where he it's very obvious that you're not going to let him go you're not going to let him get out of this so he's like, ah, I wish you would have chosen the easy way. And then he says, dumb. And then okay. your character's like, dumb? He's like, no, I'm D. 
He's, He's dumb. dumb. And, and you then turn, you get knocked out you, by you, another fat guy. You, you, he points to someone saying like someone's behind him, and then he does this slow, the slowest turn possible. Not even slow motion. He's just like, I don't know why he didn't just immediately turn around and then big old buff fist in his face and you're knocked out. You wake up, good old Tweedledee and Tweedledum are gone. You unlock the, the fable card and get to the, I, I read every, all the information out of all of them whenever they showed up. Nice. But um, Snow White's just like, what's up? Uh, she's standing over you. Uh, I don't remember exactly what she says, but you're like, well, I, I said, well, where did they go? Did you see where they went? She doesn't know. And um, pretty much they knocked you out and ran away. So, I mean, you're a sheriff, so I feel like a lot of criminals are like not going to want to mess with a sheriff past getting away. You would think. Um, you would think. And I don't remember exactly how that continues, so if someone else wants to jump. The uh, fat guy started saying that they were going to go investigate this place, and so you're like, they're going here, so you tell her that you go to this bar. And mm -hmm. then you both take a cab there, and you get out, and she keeps going. You're, you're looking and then for the woodsman go. at this point, yeah, because that's the only other lead yeah. you have. You dealt with Toad, you found Lawrence, and uh, so <clears throat> you go in the bar, and you go up, and you're like trying to talk at the uh, bartender. Yeah, there's like to a get some older information. Lady as the bartender, like maybe, and a mid, dude mid, mid like with a uh, uh, like a blind eye. Yeah, he's like hunched yeah. over um, over the bar, and he's very like he doesn't. Talk to also, you, just, the guy that gave you a hard time when you were in the office. Oh, he's was the that guy him? Who spoke up. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Pick up on that. Okay. He's the guy who yeah. spoke up and I hate you. I don't like laugh. Yeah, and you're like trying to ask where the the woodsman is, and like they're like giving you the cold shoulder and not talking to you oh, and yeah. making threats to you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you hear a toilet flush, and then you hear someone washing their hands, and then you're like staring at the door, and all of a sudden he comes out, and uh. You go to talk to him, and the guy, like, tries to stop you, and the uh, woodsman's like, nah, he's fine. Then they start talking, and the woodsman says, you know, I was actually going to rob Red Riding Hood because I didn't have any money, and uh, you were there. So I figured if I protected her, like, maybe I'd get, like, a reward or something. But no, all I get is, like, free drinks every once in a while. And they, they had a little bit of a conversation, and... Um, She's very rude the whole time. Yeah. Oh, and super nice. You walk in and she's immediately like, you get the F out of here. Like, there's a lot of language in this game, by the way. We probably should have started off with that. Um, And when Andrew picked this, he didn't realize, but it's bad, bad. So, like, yeah, it's, that's it's a, pretty rough. If that's a deal breaker for you. Maybe don't. I mean, if you've also listened this far and you don't care about spoilers, so maybe you don't even maybe. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> um. Basically, so, you, you're you're investigating the bar. Um, you're you're talking to these people, trying to get them to give you some information because you're there to try to find the woodsman, and they're just like, "I ain't seen the woodsman in a while." And it's very obvious, like there was a picture of him up behind her, and she's like, "Who who are you talking about? Who's this guy?" Um, and you're just kind of looking around. Josh, you want to continue? You were saying something. So this is where I made a mis the same kind of mistake that Nathan did. Oh no. Oh, okay. Glass, okay. Uh, I thought glass. you were going to say you glass. did something. Okay. Okay. Glass. glass. Yeah. I, uh, okay. Hold up. It's, it's... Not yet. Not yet. Um, so you're talking and uh, you're trying to like talk to this guy who's sitting at the bar who's not giving you anything. He's like, you could sit somewhere else. Um, whatever. And then you just hear someone finishing up their business in the bathroom and like the door opens and you hear someone walking and. He's like, hey, Holly, did you hear? You're out of paper towels. Mr. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Woodsman comes out on first name basis with the um, the the bartender who doesn't know who he is and uh, sees you. And uh, he goes and sits down and he's uh, obviously not very happy. I uh, I, tr I don't know why I know. I feel like I wouldn't have if I was really thinking because I don't I, I, <laughs> I ask, dude. Uh, if you went one number or one or number two, I did two. <laughs> um, because if you didn't go number, I hope you did went number two because otherwise you're probably crapping your pants right now. <laughs> Which I thought was pretty dang funny. It's a dialogue in this um, game. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, and uh, so, dude's like, you and I have been fighting for thousands of years. I'm done with it. And uh, so I told him I am too. Um, and cause you, I mean, you, all all these dialogue dialogue options. You have you have like. Op, like ways to sway the conversation. Different you have ways. three options or one to keep quiet. Yeah, one to keep quiet, which then like you just don't mm -hmm. respond. But 
normally I try to keep like a level head and just like talk to like, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't want trouble. I don't want to keep fighting yeah. the woodsman. He was very drunk and came at us and attacked a prostitute with last time we were with him. So like it kind of escalated. We didn't really have a choice. He's not now. And he's just normal and very Chill. dumb with it. Yeah. And uh, seems willing to talk. Like, and he opens up to you, tells you about his, bit, his yeah. backstory a little bit. and But the well, whole time you're, you're there like trying to find to out about Faith, thinking yeah. he did this to Faith. And he's like talking about some robbery he was going to do, but you were there. So you weren't, he wasn't able to do it. Yeah. And you're just like, dude, I know this story. This is not what I'm talking to you about. Um, and the whole time that the guy, the guy at the bar is like getting annoyed with you and upset with you, telling like, you to it's sit like somewhere his, else. It's almost like it's his bodyguard or something. Yeah. Because the way that he's he was acting and like he the the bartender whenever you were asking questions was like looking at him and he was like shaking his yeah, head and very subtly like, and yeah. stuff like it was it was weird situation but okay there's an there's a dialogue option that I didn't understand until it was too late so me too I restarted me this too. scene I'm just saying that I did you're it. talking to this dude you're sitting there talking with the woodsman you're like chill I was like yeah man I don't want to fight either I just want to figure out what's going on like why did you do it. And he's like, you know, I was he apparently he was set up to rob little or little red riding hood and her grandmother. And yep. but then um, good old Bigby was there. And so it, it foiled his plans. So he's just over here admitting to another crime he was going to do. But like he had nothing. Like, this is not why Bigby's here. And he, th- he, he so very obviously he. I just feel like there's a lot of things that point to him. I think he's just real sad this. and depressed. I don't think yeah. he really knows that something happened. To he the, I don't think he has any clue that the woman happened to yeah. Faith. It doesn't seem that so way to me now. Before you even tell, talk, like, talk about Faith, before you even get to that point, there's an option where it says, like, it, it, it says, glass him. Glass him. And I didn't know what that means. I thought it meant, like, you're going to, like, so, raise your glass or, like, no. Clink, I, I didn't when know I what saw it meant. That, I thought it was going to be, like, like, I thought it meant, like, have a drink with him or something. So yeah. Like, yeah, I was like, glass him. We'll and have so a you, drink together. Maybe so he'll I open up. It. I clicked it. And your character starts <laughs> talking, and then he goes, Damn! Immediately. <laughs> I, Is that I, what you I ultimately chose? I had a chose, look Josh? of horror on yeah. my face. I hit escape, oh, that and I restarted that entire scene, because I was not <laughs> going to have it go that way. I, didn't, I, I would not do that if I made a decision that I knew what I was doing, but I made a decision I did not know what I was doing. I did not want to attack this guy, so I restarted like, there. I didn't want to fight him because I was like, oh, this is going cool. He's opening up. He's he, he's done. And then I see glass him. And I, the first thing I was like, okay, I'll have a drink with him. Maybe he'll open up. And immediately it goes from the the woodsman. You look at your character and your character just takes a big old glass and just beats him over the head with it. And it shatters. And I'm like, that's not what I meant. You should have restarted. <laughs> nah, because it what? gets great after that. Okay, I bet it does, but I want to say, since I started this, what happened? So, basically, I'm like, I don't remember exactly how the dialogue led into telling him that Faith is dead, but he's just like, yeah, Faith's, Faith, Faith's uh, dead, head, head, head cut off, whatever. And his eyes go wider than I've seen a person's eyes go. He's like, oh my, no, listen, I did it. I had nothing to do. I know how this looks. I know how this looks. I had absolutely nothing to do with it. And then like at another point in the dialogue, he like turns away and she's like, he's like, she's really dead. Like it's, he seems very genuinely upset, like, uh, like bothered by this. And obviously like he knows how absolutely horrific this looks for him. Like no matter what he has to go for questioning. Um, and in this, I, I also made another mistake in this scene, but it wasn't one that I ended up deciding to restart for the whole thing again for, um, I just fig- said I'll just go with what happens. But you're you're in, you're talking about this. You're like telling him like you need to go in. I need to take you in. And his I'm just gonna call him his bodyguard. But the actual guy's name is Grendel. Um, and because I, I was gonna ask scene, you knew who he was. Yeah. Um, I don't know the I don't know what the creature is. I don't know what lore he's from. Oh, so he's uh he's the monster from Beowulf. If you've ever it doesn't look anything like Beowulf. Like that's images, that's what though. he's supposed to be. Yeah, that's what he's supposed okay. to be. Um, so he's supposed to be this fable from like the Beowulf story, and he ends up being like, "No, you're not taking him in." Whatever. He just stands up and he's he's had enough of this, and then he just transforms into this huge, like white, buff, lanky beast with like like a pillow looking face and big old teeth and crap. And then you end up having a whole knockdown, drag out fight with him in the middle of this bar. Oh, also and the, the bartender. The bartender <laughs> is a big old ogre. Yeah, she's like, I'll be fine. I'm just a big demon looking over her. <laughs> they just like change out of their glamour and then you're fighting him 
and he kind of gets the upper hand at one point and you end up starting like half transforming into a wolf and Mm -hmm. um you end up getting the upper hand and you beat the crap out of him and you get an option where like he's laying on the ground like he's josh he's like you didn't no you didn't josh no okay well you're fighting this guy you end up getting the upper hand you end up like you win he's like knocked over on the ground he's done he's out he's like heavy he's breathing real heavy he's all cut up and scraped up and crap and you're standing over him it gives you the option to whip off his arm or to not because the woodsman's even like leave him alone he's had enough and i did not rip off his arm because i'm not a monster i did not rip off his arm no because Andrew's not Josh, a monster. are you a monster? No. Did it give you the illustrious Gren will remember this or whatever? I don't know, but like you actually had to go through the keyboard motions of ripping it off and, and clicking Ooh. it. Because <laughs> when it gave me the option, I'm like, I hate oh. this guy. He's giving me nothing but trouble. I'm going to teach him a lesson. <laughs> okay, so, so Josh, take his arm. <laughs> question for you. After that, and I don't know how the woodsman and the, the bartender would have reacted there. Does Tweedle freaking D show up into the bar? Yeah. Okay. So it, in, that's like, how it looking connects. at something. He shows up and he's like looking around. He's not even, he doesn't notice you immediately. And I did not rip off this guy's arm. And so I was standing there between halfway between the woodsman and Tweedle good old D when he walks in, he stares at me. And then both he and the woodsman realize I got to go. Mm-hmm. And it shows both of them. And then it makes you make a choice. And I regret the choice I made. I don't regret the choice. I chose I made. the woodsman. I chose Tweedledee. Ooh, I okay. really wish I had. Uh, it happened, and it was like a. It basically it's like slow motion. They both start running, and then it does like a action quick scene. And I've just I clicked on him without thinking. I was like, I was, I don't know what it's making me do here. I thought maybe I'll grab him, and then I I don't know. But I didn't decide to redo it all. But I absolutely, I don't think the woodsman killed Faith. I think he has. He's, See, he even tells him earlier the, in the conversation, he's like, yeah, man, I'm a real piece of crap. I know that, but I didn't kill her. <laughs> yeah. um, I no. didn't have that dialogue with him about Faith. So oh, at all. when it gave me that, when it gave me that, uh, that option, I was like, I'm going after him because okay. to me, he's still a suspect. Gotcha. Yeah. I chose Tweedledee just because I am trying my best to be non- violent in this game um but uh yeah i chose tweedledee because i figured since we had that like heart to heart that even though he's running away i feel like if we need to we could still bring him in for questioning or like ask him to come back i regret my decisions whereas (laughs) tweedledee knocked me out and i kind of had a vendetta against him so so since you did tweedledee what happened with you well, after, good. I was gonna say after that, it just you know you try. You're like we're gonna take you into the station, and then it cuts to um, the whole scene with um, you know the the soon to be revealed death that you guys saw. Okay. Yeah. So uh, pretty much, I don't think just, I would imagine you're, you're, you're nothing walking changes. Along, like, I don't a dark know. street. Like it's and night. You, and you're handcuff him through a light pole. Is that what you do? That's what I did. He, you walk yeah, down the too. street, you see cops you, lights. You're basically like you grab the woodsman and you knock him down and you you handcuff him. And says you're not getting away, whatever. And um, he's pretty resigned to his fate at this point since you caught him. And so you end up uh, you're you're taking him. I guess you're taking him in. I don't know, but you're walking along the street. You end up hearing like a commotion. Something's going on in the distance. So you let you uh, uh, handcuff him to the pole. And you say, if you go anywhere, something, something, whatever, but you threaten him. I'll rip your arm off. I don't remember what he said, but, (laughs) uh, and then, uh, the, the real gut sounds like, yeah, it sounds like it was just a palette swap for what happened to be honest. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, a real gut punch of this, uh, this, this game. You end up, I, I'm upset. Uh, I didn't, I, it, I knew it was going to be bad as soon as they were like looking at the same place. Basically you walk over, you leave dude handcuffed to the pole and there's like a whole bunch of people like freaking out. I saw a beast running out like in the street and he looked really upset and I thought something happened to beauty. I thought it was, I did too. I think that was like a quick like, oh, red herring beauty. and there's like a whole bunch of cops like over by the front steps of the apartment building you live in right where the initial head was. So you walk up. You peer over the cop's shoulder, very filled with dread, and you see Snow White's head laying on the ground. Bum, bum, it's the bum. same exact way as a uh, face. Which, which is why 
crackpot theory number two is saying that uh, I'm assuming at least one of them aren't dead. I'm hoping both of them are still alive or can be come back come back to life, even though they're both severed heads. Because there's got to be a reason, you know. Video game designers love their their subtle hints at things. I got when you it. Look back. So, and the, what's the title of the episode called? I don't know. I don't remember. It's called Faith. Is the first episode. Mm. Faith is just the name of the girl, yeah. and faith of you know things aren't always what they seem, and that's exactly the whole premise. It seems of this first episode is nice. things are not what they look like. So I'm wondering if one or both of them are going to come back at some point. You know, like I don't know. I'm not saying they're alive, but I'm Here, saying you, maybe we here's can my bring them back. crackpot theory. All right, hit me, Ichabod Crane is the manager because someone else like something happened to somebody else. So he's like, take yeah, it over. They talk like about it. Or something, yeah. Yeah. And he's the dude. And Ichabod Crane is like weird in this realm compared to how he is in the actual fairy tale. When you go, when buff or whatever the monkey's name brings out the book and you look at it, it's basically shows you the fairy tale creatures an all-in-one painting of everybody that you've met up to this point. Mm-hmm. And in the far right corner is Ichabod Crane being chased by the headless horseman. Now, mm. at the same Ooh, time, wow. yeah. when he was inspecting Faith's neck, if you look, both of the heads have like these blue like lightning strikes at the very, like right where it's cut, right here. Mm-hmm. It's like these blue little marks coming up. And he said, there's only two things that could do this. A very sharp knife or magic. Yeah. And he said so the way that the head was cut yeah. was very weird. Now, my third point to this is when you go to the mirror for the first time before you, I think it's before you learn who Faith is, like um, mm-hmm. her whole backstory, the first time you talk to the mirror, you ask to see faith. Yeah. And he straight up tells you like in a riddle that like he can't show you. Yeah. That's what I was saying earlier. He's, he's under that same, almost like an enchantment, you know, that he can't show you who she is and his lips are sealed. That phrase is uttered like two or three times. So maybe like there is something going on with her body, just like the headless horseman who doesn't have a head. Maybe her body is uh maybe it's the headless horseman. It's guys, a possibility. You guys are giving me hope. Hey. I was just sad. I mean, does Ichabod Crane ever get his head back though? I don't know. Do you mean the headless horseman? Does he ever get I his head back? He, I, I don't. Yeah, it's yeah. been so long. Because he had a pumpkin thought, head usually. Yeah. Yeah, it's been so long. I, I don't know why I thought uh they took Ichabod's the head, head. Yeah. They might have, I think, in the fairy tale, but which might be what they're doing because they're definitely not shying away from the gritty rea- realism. Here, so, yeah, it's very possible. No, they. So yeah, that was. That that's now really you see weird. why I was super excited to play this game. Not only because yeah, you know, I'm really interested in good, but, finding out what happens next. But like the second one is supposed to come out at some point this year, oh. so I was like, "Dog, I gotta play." I gotta play the first one through. We keep just so playing old play the games that have a sequel and coming out in the one. same year. There's a phenomenal <laughs> game that's coming out. Talos Principle, Alan Wake. Th- this has actually happened Fairy three tales. times in a row. Mm-hmm. All right, that's p- hilarious. Um, and that about ends <laughs> it. It kind of shows you like highlight reel of what's you to expect in episode two. When yeah, and I didn't watch it because I don't watch stuff like oh, that. Oh, actually. That's Real quick, why you before didn't we before we get to the next segment, I know because I had we seen are running it earlier. a little bit long though, so we'll yeah move it along here because we had to verbatim uh, explain the entire episode. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that could have been quicker. But are we going to the next thing, or are we looking up something? It's a good conversation though. Give me one second. I don't know. I think he's, I found I don't know he's doing yeah. something here. There we go. Sorry. Yeah. So they uh. Let's see. So 84% of people, so there's a, I knew I could find it. There were percentages of what people did mm-hmm, throughout the episode. Chose. So mm-hmm. 84% of people gave faith money. Interesting. Um, Where do you see this information? 
As I'm soon as you beat the game, the, the, the chapter, it's on the, it came out. Yeah, it's the chapter recap. Yeah, that's, that's why cool. you should have followed the. Uh, it'll show you like what You're was right. to expect in episode two, and at You're the end right. of that, it shows you like what people did. So you guys were in the majority, where fifty nine percent of people lied to Beast. Okay. Um, uh, where'd you decide to go first? Sixty nine percent of people went to Toad's apartment first. Noise. Um, let's see. Uh, what happened to Prince Lawrence? Uh. Uh, there's not a percentage on this one, but most did not prevent his death. Um, apparently, you can prevent you can... his death. Oh, maybe Probably if you go there you go first. first. You yeah, go yeah, because that's what. Oh, yeah, that's so yeah. sad. Whenever I talk to him, he um, he actually he's alive, and instead oh. of Tweedledee being in the closet, he breaks um, in. You hide in the closet. Yeah, he breaks in because he's trying to do something, and basically, you and Snow White are like, hey play dead because you were just like pretty much dead. Just play dead because you have a freaking hole in your lungs. He'll believe you're dead. And then he like kind of tries to search throughout the apartment and then you chase him down. Cause he finds you in the closet. Mm. Um, so I don't know if that means it prevented his death. Cause there's also an option where he dies by his own hand anyway. So I don't know if that, yeah, it, it was kind of left open. The I left. Yeah. Um, I'm let's sad. see. Who's your prime suspect? So whenever you could talk, um, tell who okay. it was. Yeah, most people twenty nine percent said said nothing. Yeah, I didn't they say said anything. Nothing I have before. no clue yet. Yeah, the majority of people said I nothing said the to him. Um, I said I said the it was Georgie, even though I don't know who he is yet. Um, yeah, I never even heard that name come up, so I just yeah. chose the pimp every time. And uh, who did you arrest? 68% of people chose Tweedledee, so surprisingly, yeah. you guys were in the, well, I were didn't, in the small I, there. I'm, I regret it, so there's that. Yeah. I but don't, yeah, because I, I didn't have a dialogue. further, because I don't want to get, I don't wanna get uh, spoiled. All right, so it's that time of the day again where we do the fantasy draft. <laughs> And I'm not very good at these ones. So the one that I came up for this week is you have to make a sandwich. You get one type of bread, one type of meat, one type of cheese. And if you desire one condiment and remember the way the fantasy draft works is once that item is selected, no one else can choose it. Okay, all right. So let's let's get some ground rules before we start. Ground Are we going to do this like do we all pick from the same category first? Like we all go for a bread and then a meat or is it just I kind was of a just thinking you you do your whole sandwich, then Nathan does okay. his whole sandwich. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I got you. Uh, uh the order since it was my idea would be Andrew, Nathan, me, then me, Nathan, Andrew. So are we making two sandwiches then? Yeah. Okay. Or you could cool. just do one. one. All right, cool. So my, let's see. Firstly, I would probably at the base. Uh, ooh, that'd be really good. So I'm gonna go with a ciabatta, toasted ciabatta base. You know, maybe with a little bit of, um, if there's like a, I know there's like focaccia. Yeah, so focaccia. That's what I'll choose because that's like a, there's like a cheesy kind of, uh, yeah, um, bread. Um, so I'll choose focaccia. Um, little lightly and- toasted. Uh, I would after that have to choose uh, shaved prime rib because I would oh dude get like a like a French dip type of meat kind of what I'm going for here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I would have to go with uh, I would want some sort of tangy sauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, cheese uh, gotta go like Swiss on that bad boy would be phenomenal. So I'm gonna go Swiss and I'm gonna go with a cheese. I guess is my kind of condiment topping or a topping. So yeah, I would say Swiss cheese. If I could get a condiment on there, I'd put like a, you don't I'd have say, to. It's optional. That's fair. I'd still, you need a little bit of liquid on there. It's still a pretty dry sandwich right now. Um, so I would say some sort of like tangy peppercorn, like, uh, <sighs> like a garlic peppercorn aioli. Spread some of that bad boy on there. This guy's sandwiches, and, dude. I I'm fat. I gotta know sandwiches, and I can't have a lot of bread anymore. So I'm super excited to talk about it. But, uh, <laughs> and then if it would be allowed, since it is kind of like a French dip, I would definitely have some au jus on the side. Just dunk that bad boy. Wouldn't the au jus count as a condiment? 
fudge than I, I already said the the peppercorn. Yeah. So we're gonna go with the garlic aioli peppercorn. Okay. All right. Nathan? Thoroughly delightful multi grain bread, turkey, uh pepper jack cheese, and some spicy brown mustard. A little mustard. You had me until the mustard. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go basics here because it's still I like. Did. I'm going to go white bread. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go. What kind uh, of white bread? Just like the plain white bread. Mine's low bread. calorie. We get the Sara Lee Artesian Fine. bread. It's like mm-hmm. real thick slices like this. It's just really good. Mm. Um, some boar's head, black forest ham. Mm, good choice. Uh, a slice of craft singles. Uh, oh, cheese, American cheese. That's that is surprising. It's, it's gross if yeah, you eat it cold. I but I'm actually. gonna have a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. There you go. Oh, uh, my yeah. cheese. Delicious. What cheese did you say, Andrew? Oh, I chose Swiss. I already, I already some cheese. I don't know why. And then for the um, condiment, would it be gray poupon. <laughs> Oh, more mustard. Ugh. Oh my god. Disgusting. My second sandwich is gonna be pita bread. Ooh. A, like a z- zesty grilled chicken and like that's been like marinated, like we had for dinner tonight. I think some kind of like mozzarella, um maybe I don't, something like along the lines of like a goat cheese, but not goat cheese, but you know, like that crumble cheese they have. And then tzatziki sauce on it. Mm, Just kiss. There you go. Interesting. Interesting. Nathan, you want to hit us up with more low calorie wheat bread? Sarah Lee delightful wheat bread. Uh, sliced uh, deli chicken. A little bit of light Artist. mayonnaise. No, you said like yeah. chick grilled chicken yeah, stuff. Okay, like it was true, different. True. And okay, it's like the right. sliced just deli chicken. Uh, okay. I'm very just very basic sandwich crap here, but it's delicious. Um, some light mayonnaise and what cheese? I haven't forgot the cheese. I mean, it's just like habanero cheese. What kind nice. of cheese? Habanero, like a oh. uh, it's like a cheddar. Like they have some like pepperoni of, yeah. cheese. Yeah. Okay. It's the same deal. Um, I would say I'd go with some good old thinly sliced sourdough for this one. Uh, call back to Xbox. Never not think of that <laughs> now. Um, get some. Uh, I'm gonna go different because I'm gonna just take one slice of bread well, and toast it up a little bit. Okay. Um, go get some corned beef. Uh, after put some of that, cook some of that down in some in some roux. Make uh, make some SOS if you know what that is. Mm-hmm. And that's that's well, the nice term for it is chip beef on toast. So you just have like this open-faced sandwich. Um, it's basically like flour, water, and a little bit of sweetness to it in some regard. But it's basically just like chipped beef, a piece of bread, slathered in this like gravy almost. But it's not yeah. quite a gravy. Oh, it's so good. I haven't had it in so long. It sounds lovely. It's pretty good. You guys are good with your sandwiches. Well, thank Indeed. you. Nathan, thank you. I love all your artisanal stuff, and then Josh and I's pretty pretty basic stuff. <laughs> Well, I had a feeling you guys were going to take some of the simple stuff, so I had to go a little bougie. I'm a fan. Good stuff. Well, I'm like still you. also on the high of uh, you know Being eating regular food it. again. Mm-hmm. So yeah, mm-hmm. so that's my bad. <laughs> well, if you made it this far into this lovely, wonderful my mom is de- my mom has Tourette's podcast, I would appreciate you. <laughs> For being here, we uh, my mom's like more heroes. Got um, killed herself, and nope, that didn't happen. Don't do that. Don't do that, mom. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you, (laughs) and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, if you you. (laughs) are actually still listening to this, like the podcast, if you've not subscribed. Like if you're watching on watching watching on the YouTube, bell. yeah, you better subscribe and hit that bell because if you don't, we're gonna come to your house tonight. Um, you know, you I'm gonna take a are. nugget instead this time. Lawrence, since no one wants one. Yeah, jo- Andrew's <laughs> taking the nugget. But uh, apart from that, if you're listening to on podcasting platforms, you know, give us some kind of rating if you want to. It's helpful for us, helpful in the algorithm, and it's just like you 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 caring enough about That's the podcast to to let us know. Let people know that you're interested. Five stars is obviously the best. If you 
have any real reason to go lower, take it up with us first. Shoot us How a DM, can being like, to just go to your brother and How tell him his hope? issues, and if he chooses not to continue with them, and then to, to, to actually go back on the right path, then you go and rate it lower stars. Otherwise, rate it five 15. stars. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, man. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. We love you. Josh Goodbye. Ballin. Y'all ballin. Ballin. Y'all.